Hello and welcome to Saturday Sketch Club. My name is Will Iron and I'm here today with Eleanor Stanley and we are on site at the Royal Academy of Arts in our Claw Learning Centre. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, so as well as your pencil and paper, do grab sellotape and scissors if you have them to hand. We're going to be doing a bit of cutting up of your drawings in the end, you have been pre-warned. Um, we are going to be working from a life model today. However, this is not going to be a traditional life drawing class. Instead, we're really going to be exploring movement uh, and repetition. Please do share your work with us throughout the session. We'll have an opportunity at the very end to have a look at some of your drawings. You can do this using the hashtag RA Sketch Club on Twitter and Instagram, or by uploading images to the Facebook group. Do use the chat, say hello, uh, and tell us where you're joining from. If you have any questions, please do put it in the Q&A box below. And I'll be monitoring that throughout the session, so we'll try and get back to as many of those questions as possible. Today's artist tutor is Eleanor Stanley. Uh, Eleanor, as well as being a great artist and a fantastic teacher, is also a student here at the Royal Academy Schools, uh, graduating next year. Uh, those of you who don't know, we actually have our school show opening next week. Uh, it is completely free to attend, but you do have to book this year. Uh, there will be some fantastic works, and Eleanor's work isn't going to be shown because it's for final year students, but I know she has been working on the install, so I know how busy you've been, so thank yeah. you for joining <laughs> us. Um, do you want to kick us off and tell us a bit about what we're going to be doing today? Okay, so we're going to be looking at drawing and repetition today. We're going to be using a life model, but we're going to be thinking more about character and mood that's brought on by physicality rather than it being a really kind of traditional life drawing session. Um, drawing repeated imagery is something I do in my own work a lot. I'll draw drawing over and over and over again. Images will repeat and I'll do a kind of whole set of paintings all of the same subject in various different manifestations. So I wanted to explore that a bit today and you know when you draw things over and over again things become accentuated, things become simplified. You know images and figures can become quite emblem-like and they can be things that recur in your work over and over again. So I wanted to try and think about doing drawings based on that. So... Great. Well, yeah. I mean, should we start off with some of those, some slides? Yeah, let's go to some slides. So these are works from the Royal Academy collection and this is a very sort of standard academic study of a male nude, uh, 1876 by Pascal Adolphe Jean Bagan bouveret on long name. Um, and I like this one because although it's a fairly academic, straightforward study, you still get a real feel for the model's character. His physicality and stance are things that are giving away his personality. And we, you know, even though it was all those years ago and it's in this very kind of staid um, academic setting of the Beaux Arts School in Paris, it's, it's still a kind of, you still get quite a lot of character and mood from it. Um, so this is James Bateman, 1935, Two Studies of a Man Laughing. And this is a kind of, you know, it looks like quite a quick, fluid stretch and you sketch. And you get two images of the man. And actually, both of them look quite different. And I kind of think you could sort of hear a different kind of laughter coming from the two faces. Like, there's a kind of quicker, snappier one and a more kind of guffawing, low laugh is how I kind of imagine it. And there's a kind of trueness to this in the way we see someone and they are different from different moments and you know there's something like uh, something quite real about the repetition there that I like. Uh, this is Waterfall by Gertrude Hermes in 1967. So this isn't a figure study, but I really love the way she's kind of distilled and actualized elements of the waterfall's movements. There's kind of vector lines drawing, drawn off and the directional stylization we have gives more of a sense of the kind of travel and direction of the water moving and shaping the land that, we, that it's coming through. Then, you know, and that kind of stylization and all those kind of vector lines coming off give more of a sense of sense of the physicality of it than we would get from a more realistic study. This is Grace and Perry, Red Allen, in, from 2011. Um, so that's a depiction of the artist's bear, Alan Measles, which you, those of you who know his work will know that Alan Measles, which is the artist's childhood teddy bear, has become a kind of totemic figure in his practice. And he kind of recurs in multiple forms throughout. Um, so that's quite a fun idea of you know, how, how a figure can recur in your work. And this is quite a cartoony version. It's kind of a doleful, frustrated stance. Um, and that we, you know, that's been given to this toy, this inanimate object. And 
another thing that I think is quite interesting is it doesn't take very much at all for humans to give an inanimate thing a kind of mood and a personality. And it's, you know, we, we do it kind of instantly. And I think it's one of the kind of greatest charms and idiocies of humanity that we're always going around personifying everything. Um, this is Falling Titan, 1786 by Thomas Banks. And this is a, you know, this is a great piece. It's very classical, very historical example of that kind of accentuated mood and body, the kind of muscular fallen man. Um, it's actually quite a playful work because it's got this giant plummeting thing, figure going head down, contrasted by, I don't know if you can see, but there's a tiny little satyr and goats at the bottom. So you can see that he's a kind of a giant tumbling from the mountain. Um, the whole body is kind of contorted, and the face is a kind of mask of defeat. Like we know, we know the we know the the mental state of this body. Um, it's kind of like a punctuation symbol for defeat. This image, but it's also, but it's quite charming because in itself, it's a very kind of virtuoso, successful work. So he's kind of playing with that. This is another carving, but this is a uh, carving in Paros marble, 1937 by Maurice Lambert. And this is a really kind of playful and stylized figure. And you get a real sense of kind of captured movement and that being expressed co so kind of like luxuriously in that smooth, smooth material. But you can also see that kind of many details are left out or other elements are accentuated or emphasized to kind of give the desired impact of the figure. And then finally, this is Anthony Wishaw, Woman Surprised by Flies. And it's another kind of quick, quite theatrical sketch. It's humorous. It's a little bit pantomime. You get a kind of feeling of action and narrative from it. So, yeah, those were just the slides I wanted to show before we start. Brilliant. Uh, so let's meet our model and get started. So this is Lucia, who's a performer. Um, and what I want us to do is just for two minutes, we're just going to look at Lucia as she walks around and we're going to take in her physicality. You can draw a little bit if you wish, but this is really just about observing, taking it all in with your eyes. So just for two minutes, Lucia, if you'd like to start moving. So I am just going to draw a little bit, but I know my drawings aren't going to be any good. I just want to kind of get a sense of Lucia as she walks and, you know, just think about the way she moves, you know, the way the hips turn into legs, the kind of angle of her shoulders. It's nice with the lighting because we've already got a kind of graphic version of Lucia there. I'm kind of barely looking at my paper as I'm drawing because I really just want to be concentrating on taking Lucia in with my eyes. In a moment, we'll, um, we'll see some of Ellen's drawings towards the end, but I think really focus on what you're observing at this point. So you can sort of think about this as like the beginning of a of a book or a play or a film and this is the entrance of the character of Lucia and think about that in your work. It's quite useful sometimes to think in those quite dramatic terms. And we've got about a minute left of just sort of observing Lucia moving and again as Elena says you can do some quick mark making here so a few sort of quick sketches or else just watching and getting a sense of Lucia. And that is our two minutes up. Okay, great. So now we're going to 
still going to be moving, but Lucia is going to kind of dance and move as we draw. And now we are going to try and draw, and this is going to be for five minutes. And again, you're not going to make good drawings now. My drawings are going to be terrible. <laughs> but it's about kind of visually understanding, and it's a kind of note-taking and watching of Lucia. So if you want to head, start off Lucia, that's great. And uh, do you have any sort of advice on doing these sort of quick drawings? Well, it's, I mean, an awful lot of it, and this is what we're going to look at further, is thinking about memory. So, you know, if somebody's just moved and you're still drawing them, in a way you're thinking about what you saw a moment ago rather than what you're seeing at this particular minute. So my advice is don't be precious. Don't beat yourself up if it's not a good drawing. And, you know, if you do something like a giant leg and a tiny head or, you know, a monster ham arm or something, that doesn't matter because really you're just trying to learn the body. You're just trying to kind of learn what's going on. So I'm drawing Lucia's thighs right now and they're rolling all over the place. But like, I'm still kind of, when I come to draw her again, this will have gone in, like, you know, this time I've spent studying her will have gone in and it will help me do the drawing later. So just be quite fluid. I mean, always be looking very quick, mostly be looking at Lucia, but, you know, flashback between your drawing. If you find yourself just looking at your drawing, you know that you've lost track a bit. And she is wearing underwear, which you don't usually have on a life model, but it's actually quite a useful marker. You can think about it as being a kind of uh, sort of brackets that are actually quite helpful in positioning your drawing. And presumably this is multiple drawings as well, or is it yeah, one yeah, drawing? Yeah, no, no, lots and lots of different drawings. So I'm doing lots and lots of kind of, you know, 20, 30 second drawings here. Fab. About halfway through. So I hope you've all got a good stack of paper at home. The way someone moves is very particular to them. Like anyone will know who's been waiting You're to meet a, minute a friend. Left. Sorry. That's okay. Who's been waiting to meet a friend that you, you kind of recognize their walk first of all when you see them coming along the street. So people are saying, people are saying difficult to draw moving people, but very yes, difficult. that is the point. And again, it's about capturing Lucia. I mean, if you could see my drawings, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be worried because... You will, we will see Ellen's drawings at some that. point. <laughs> but they're not, you know, it doesn't look like a figure. It almost just looks like lines. Actually, maybe we can, maybe we can see that up in the top, in the top right corner now. Oh, yeah. Just have a bit of an indication. Sure. So here we've got some of what... So you can see um, the kind of thing I'm doing. You know, they're not... They're not... Um, 
They're not good scholarly life drawings, basically. I'm just trying to learn learn what's going on. Okay, brilliant. So that is five minutes on Lucia's moving. Okay. That's five minutes done? Yep. Great. Okay, so now Lucia is going to make one pose for us, and this will only be three minutes long, but again, it's a, and it's going to be a still image, but again, we're going to make multiple drawings of it. Okay, so if Lucia, you'd like to take the position. Okay. So we've been doing lots of quick drawings, and often when you've done lots of quick drawings, it doesn't really work to do a really slow one. So again, okay, so three minutes starting from now. So again, we're going to work quite fast. Now you can see here that I am not going to fit the whole of Lucia onto the paper. That's okay because in a minute I'll do another one and I'll try and do that. Do you draw over the same image or do you try um, to get new images? I tend to take new ones and that's kind of my policy. I would So I would usually start a new painting rather yeah. than carrying on with one because I you know and it's 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 in a way it is working on the same thing because you're but you're just allowing it to repeat and I, that's I'm quite a believer in that I'm quite a believer in the power of repeat and how you kind of see something again when you go back to it so yes just a reminder that we're doing fast Lots of these, not just one for the whole three minutes. So you can really think about the kind of elements of Lucia's physicality that are kind of speaking to you, that you kind of feel like are giving out character, and you can accentuate those as you go. Or, I mean, you know, you could even just draw one if you wanted to, in this particular three-minute pose, kind of concentrate on something. You know, I really like this arm joining with this foot here and this kind of brace of the body. And again, I've missed the head out. Very common mistake. Now, I can know that actually there's much more of a connection between this leg, stomach here, cleavage and the shoulder is all much more compact than I was drawing it before. And presumably by doing it over and over again, actually that's what you begin to learn. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just think, I just think it, I don't know, I think it's just the way my mind works as things kind of circle around rather than you get something right and then move on. We've got about 30 seconds left this pose. And we're at time. Okay, thanks, Lucia. So now we're thinking about those kind of like many of the kind of Victorian kind of narrative paintings that are in the RA. We're going to do a very kind of expressive pose. So Lucia is going to take on a happy pose, and we're going to do a longer drawing of this one. We're going to do a five minute drawing. Always good to keep sharpening your pencil when you're doing lots of quick drawings like this as well. So it blunts very quickly. And is this one? This, this is, is one, one drawing, drawing. One drawing for five minutes. And we're trying minutes. to capture the mood. Really trying to capture the mood and the physicality. If you want to do more than one drawing, you can. But I would try and just do one drawing here now. So five minutes. Sharpen my pencil. 
So for this one, I've gone for a bigger piece of paper because I do want to try and get the whole body in. Someone's just saying that for the last one, they started each drawing from a different part of the body ah. each time and found that very useful. Yeah, that's a really good idea. If you think about that, that sculpture, that Perot marble sculpture, that has that kind of a feeling to it. You know, it's got these big arms and it's quite kind of patchworked together, but it still gives a really kind of persuasive feeling of that figure. And after the happy pose, we'll be doing the opposite, right? Yeah, that's right. So we're very lucky to have Lucia today because she's a proper performer. So she's very able to communicate with her physicality. Now what often happens when you're thinking about, you're making the body up as I'm doing now, you think about all the kind of connecting points and that can produce quite a kind of jumbled figure study and I actually quite enjoy that but it's not again it's not um academic life drawing uh, we're about halfway through for this happy pose Got about a minute left. So I'm kind of just drawing over some of my lines now because I'm correcting them in the places that they ought to be. And we're at time. Great. Thanks, Lucia. Okay, so now, so my drawing is not a very close drawing, but I would like to think it's got a bit of oomph, which is really what we're going <laughs> for. Okay, so now, Lucia, we're going to go for our dejected pose. And again, I'm going to sharpen my pencil to have a nice point. Okay, great. So let's start um, now with five minutes. Great. 
So I really love this pose. I think it's really interesting because it's, it's both soft and quite sculptural. Try and fill your paper as well. Don't do a tiny little drawing in the corner. So when capturing emotions, mm. obviously the face is very important. But is it, I mean, how, how does that balance out between? Well, I would almost say in this, I mean, Lucia's got such a great kind of facial pose in this one that you would want to catch it. But in life drawing, I yeah. don't really get the face in much because got you. you don't really have time. Sure. So I, I'm actually really thinking about the mood expressed not by yeah. a face this week. Fab. Um, but I am, I am going to try and get this great <laughs> smushed face in because I think it's so brilliant. But I mean, you can kind of, you know, if you think of a figure in a distance, it's quite easy to assign a mood to that person. Yeah. Even if we can't see their face. And that's something I'm quite interested in. And, and you do it, you do it in kind of works of art a lot I think even when you don't have that information and I mean there's you know there's some, some amazing artists like um, Voila for example barely gives you any face at all but you really get a very big emotional sense from his work about halfway through and even I mean you, you, you get it from the backs of people you get it from the backs of people yeah you get it from the way they're carrying themselves So I'm making my meetings very, very messily here. I'm not, you know, my meeting places between different parts of the body. I'm just, if I've got them wrong, which I have, I'm just drawing back on top. Try and correct them. Just because I'm really thinking about this as like a note taking. Minute left. In terms of note taking, hmm. are you note taking for something in particular? Um, is it how, how does that sort of instruct your your work as it were does that make sense I mean sometimes I am sometimes I'm like oh that is something I want to use but um and for life drawing I think you often are and we are this week because we're hopefully going to we're going to be doing one of these poses again and it's going to be about remembering um but you don't always know I mean you're yeah. kind of just note taking in general just General, general gathering is always a very good idea because then you've got it. And also when you've drawn something, you do really have it for so much longer than when you haven't drawn something. Mm -hmm. It's like, it makes such a difference. 10 seconds left.
And that is time. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Eleanor and Lucia. So we're going to take a quick five minute pause. We're going to reconvene at 11.05. Now is a great time to share your work. If you'd like to, you can do that using the hashtag RA Sketch Club on Twitter and Instagram or using the Facebook group. Um, now is also the time. We are basically, after this break, going to revisit one of those last two mm. poses, either the happy pose or the detective pose. And the one that we do, and we're going to do that for 10 minutes, is up to you. So please do vote in the chat. I will try and monitor and see how many of them I can count. Um, but we will do, uh, so it's up to you. So basically, uh, go ahead and vote which one you'd prefer to do. Do share your work, do um, go put the kettle on. If you'd like to continue drawing, also do that. In the meantime, I've got a few questions for Eleanor, and if you'd like to add any further questions, do put them in that Q&A function. Um, gosh, I've got quite a few coming in now. <laughs> um, so in terms of the sort of, in terms of in your practice, the working with this repetitive element, mm. can you sort of say why, why you do, like how, how it instructs you, as it were? Well, I really do think, for me, images do really kind of circle around mm -hmm. my mind. And I really, I really like that kind of idea of things kind of reverberating and coming around and around and around. They kind of, they change the way you do it. So, um, you know, right now I've got kind of 10 different paintings, all sort of of the same subject, but they're, they're kind of different iterations of them. And you work on them at the same time? Um, I'll kind of do, I'll kind of do work them in bodies. So I'll do a kind of, I probably wouldn't do like two at once, but I'd do one and then I'd do the next and, and they change. But um, I think it is like, yeah, it's the kind of the way I think about things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think great. And I think a really, um, you know, with these Saturday sketch clubs, I think it is all about obviously drawing is such a personal mm. thing, but actually it's, it's of giving people the opportunities and the, the tools yeah. with which to experiment different ways and find what works for them. Yeah, and I do think this is a really useful tool because, yeah. you know, if you, if you have, you've got Lucia now and you can use her again and right. again and again. Yeah. Um, so somebody is asking, you, you said earlier about um, that you like drawing feet. I've I got do. somebody asking about how do you draw hands and feet? Okay, I think hands are really difficult. Um, how do you do them? It's just, I mean, there's no, there's no kind of trick yeah. to being able to do it. But I mean, I guess it's just thinking about, it's not getting caught up on all the different little complicated things. You know, you can draw them with a few quick lines and kind of, it's that thing of kind of simplification, simplification can being persuasive. Um, but I guess you want to think about the direction and the gesture that a hand is doing. Yeah. rather than like making sure it's mechanically fitting together. And that's probably better. Feet. I personally love drawing feet. I don't know why people don't like them so much. <laughs> I think feet are great. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go too detailed. A few, a few kind of, a few lines giving, giving out what it is and then it will, everyone will know it's foot. Okay. So the, the, the boats are in. Okay. Um, it is closed, but I think uh, Dejected, the sad pose, is the winner. Great. <laughs> so, um, I think if we, we can basically kick that off. So we're going to do that for a little bit longer. Yeah, so, we're so going this to do... is going to be a 10 minute pose. Yeah. So if we can get back into the Dejected pose there with Lucia. Um, Brilliant. Okay. So, 10 minutes. And so we can go a bit slower now. And I am really happy that we're going again with this one. Because um, I think it's a really beautiful position. And we kind of know Lucia's body a bit now. So we can kind of think about what kind of mood we're giving out in our drawing. So in terms of this being a longer pose, mm. so we have 10 minutes, mm. what, what is the approach that is different to the last five minute pose? 
Well, I'm trying to get it better. I'm trying to get it more right. I'm trying yeah. to actually look at where all those limbs meet and where the hands come and the legs join and the belly meets the ground. And I'm just more slowly kind of thinking about that. And this is a new drawing, correct? This is, this is a new drawing. Start, oh, yeah. start from fresh. So starting from fresh. I'm working on A3. And which pencil are you working with? 5B, which is quite a nice soft pencil. I like a very soft pencil, but you do have to sharpen them a lot. But they're very kind of nice and responsive. But I mean, you know, a HB can be great, which is the most basic bog standard one. And when you are doing drawing from a model, mm. is there a place that you start? Or does it depend on, on the pose and... Depends on the pose. Um, there's no rule of thumb, I don't think. Often, you know, often you're told to sort of imagine. It can be a bit dangerous if you just do the outline first. So you can get, you can realize that you've mapped the edges and then you get a bit lost in the middle. Um, but you're often sort of asked to think about kind of a mouse moving over the body or you know the kind of contours of the body and traveling over that i i think i think about meeting places a lot you know i think about how, where does that hand meet that chin where does the breast meet the ground where does the legs meet the feet where does everything kind of chime together thinking about those meeting points do how important is then the floor, as it were, or, you know, here we've obviously got lines on the floor and we've got a wall line. Are well, those helpful or distracting? I would probably leave them till the end, but I'm, but I, you know, I'm sure it, some people, it might be really useful to ground themselves with the wall, but that's the kind of thing I would um, generally ignore until the end, personally. Sure. And again, I'm drawing quite messily here. I'm not. I'm not going for a pristine drawing. This is a working out drawing session, rather than a beautiful drawing session. Sometimes you do things and you realize that they're just, you know, I've just made the stomach much, much too long. And part of the reason I can tell is because it makes Lucia's body a very different kind of personality almost. It makes it much more kind of lugubrious and... Uh, and less kind of punchy than I think it is. So it's quite nice to think about those kind of things when you're trying to capture something as well. 
because with a drawing it's so it can be so quick to make something you know look frustrated rather than doleful or you know it can be it can be the tiniest thing that does it we're just over halfway through so we have another five minutes of this pose So there's a question here about sort of shading in terms of capturing mood mm. and how, how do you, and actually just to note if anybody is joining next week, we will be looking a bit more at, at, at shading and tone, but do you have any sort of tips for, do, do you use shading as a method for mood capturing as it were? I mean, I think, yeah, definitely. I think we don't have very long in this drawing, sure. so you don't have much, but I would kind of do this kind of thing as I'm doing now. I would kind of like, or... I don't know how well you can see, but over the face, I would kind of use it. And it's it's a good way of kind of suggesting information as well that you don't quite have time to, in a very short pose like this, even though it's longer than the ones we've done. Um, so yeah, to kind of, and I'm using a nice soft pencil as well. I don't really do, I mean, I sometimes I do kind of cross hatching and things, but mm -hmm. right now I'm just doing kind of pretty quick directional lines to try and give out. But it's definitely, I mean, it can be used so powerfully, yep. shade to communicate mood. Like it's a really, it's a really great thing to get into doing and to look out for in other people's work actually. Someone's saying lugubrious is their new favourite word. We had a lecture from a surgeon at the RA a while ago. And one of the questions I asked him that I was really curious about is whether people's insides have a kind of physical character in the same way their exteriors do. Hmm. What did he say? He, was, he said they did in a way. He said sort of sometimes people have a kind of very hostile environment inside. And How interesting. Yeah. So I think if I was to do this again, I would make the whole body much more compact because she's actually got, you know, like I think I said before, she's got quite a punchy body to my mind. And I think I've extended it too much. And again, you can think about this black underwear as quite a good marker. We have a minute left.
And we're coming up to time. Okay. Great. Brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Lucia. Thank you, Lucia. So, um, not to scare you or anything, but that's the last we're going to see of Lucia for a little while. So I hope you are looking carefully. We're going to do some memory-based exercises, right? Yeah. So you've still got all your old drawings to look at. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look back at all our old drawings. And we're going to choose the ones we like best. So if we look at my drawings again. Yeah. So I am just looking through them all. And I'm having a look about it. And in a way, I so for example, I prefer this five minute version to the 10 minute version I did. I think it's kind of truer. I'm gonna have a look at the other ones. I like this one. This one seems to have carried something well for me. And what other ones have I got? So these were some of the very quick two minute ones. The ones where Lucia was kind of constantly moving. That one I think has got some kind of persuasive elements to it. So it's kind of, have a look through your drawings, think about what works well, like, you know, for example, in this one, I quite like the torso and the wrists, but this leg, and obviously I'm missing the head, but somehow the fact that I like the torso and the wrists kind of works for me. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from these two for now. So I'm gonna get some more paper and these two five minute ones, to me, seem the most persuasive at this minute. So, so, she, so you've got eight minutes this next exercise? Eight minutes. So, I am gonna draw again looking from my drawing. And I'm gonna kinda of accentuate the things that I think are working. And I'm gonna be remembering Lucia as I do it. So, yeah, so you've all chosen a drawing and are working from it. So basically, just to, just to recap, taking a drawing that you've done before, mm -hmm. one or two, and working from that and also remembering. Remembering the actual physicality we were drawing yeah. by looking at it again. And this, at this point, you can kind of accentuate things as well. So, you know, I was making Lucia too kind of long. So maybe now I'm going to try and really compact her. So is it, is it about correcting things or is it about taking other areas that you want to explore? I think it's about kind of distilling. It's right. about kind of trying to accentuate the things you got from her physicality from your drawings and make them more accentuated like, you know, and in, in, in a way it's more stylized but in another way it's truer. Right. And just a reminder that, you know, not to be working from Eleanor's work, but working from yeah. the drawings that you've already done from I'm, the session. And I'm going to start that one again because I've decided it's not working. And you can do more than one as well. It can be quick. <laughs> Here's a nice question from Michelle. Can you recommend any sort of memory exercises or memory games that improve yeah. your memory and that help I them mean, with drawing? One that you, wouldn't, you would be amazed at how difficult it is, 
is if you and I were just to look at each other yes. for like a minute okay. and then we had to stop and just draw each other, it would be so hard <laughs> to remember the details. That's a really fun one, but you can do it for kind of longer lengths of time. Um, something I find quite fun is looking at work, like works of art, and then trying to draw them from memory, like particularly ones that you really like and, you know, things oh, yeah, lovely. got a really strong atmosphere and seeing what you actually kind of retain and which bits you, yeah. you pick out. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Okay, it's about halfway through, so we've got another four minutes of this one. And Marsha's just added in the chat saying that one that they use is on train journeys and looking at images passing by the window for a few mm. seconds and then trying to sketch it. Yeah, that's a fun idea. It's always quite fun on trains because, you know, some things in your view are moving slowly and some things are moving so quickly. <laughs> and it gives you quite a kind of sense of vertigo of things passing. And fun fact about Matisse is apparently he wouldn't go in cars because he couldn't look at things slowly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes you shudder when you think about what we, how much we look at. Right. <laughs> Moving quickly. Someone's saying they've lost some of the movement from doing it from memory. Mm. Do, you, do you find that, or is there a way of, sort of counterbalancing that at all? Counterbalancing it. Well, I think that is natural, because yeah. I think you're losing detail. But I guess, I guess the point of what we're going to do next as well, which is going to be simplification, is to try and... Um, it's what I'm slightly doing now. Is to try and kind of... As in that drawing of a waterfall I showed you at the beginning, the way it's kind of fragmented and stylized actually gives you more of a sense of movement. Mm -hmm. About a minute left on this one. And coming up to time. Okay. Go. Great. Brilliant. Thank you, Eleanor. All right. Do you want to tell us what we're doing for our final exercise, our last 10 minutes? Okay, so our final 10 minutes, it's again, we're drawing from the drawings that we have, but we're going to even more simplify them. As I sort of began to do in the final drawing I was doing there, and I don't know if any of you have seen Picasso's cutouts, his paper cutouts, or if any of you saw any at the, at the uh, Royal Academy Picasso exhibition. But we're going to kind of, in the way he did, create really, really simplified versions and then cut into them and fold. And it, in that way, I was talking about kind of like simplified movements, limbs, folding. 
it's going to get a little bit 3D. Um, my colleague Imelda has just put that exhibition link oh, great. to the okay. Picasso and paper in the chat. So if any of you, did, if any of you didn't see it or, or, or don't know what we're talking about, you can have a look at there and, and see the sort of things that he was working on. Okay. So, it's kind of up to you if you want to cut into old drawings or if they're a bit too precious, you can make some new ones. I think I'm going to do a little bit of a mixture. So, um, yeah, so another 10 minutes now. So, I think first of all, I might start by cutting into this one because I don't think this one. I need to find my scissors. Here they are. <laughs> Work is mounting I up. Them out for you. <laughs> yeah. Work is mounting up on the table. So if I just start, it's maybe quite a good idea to start by just cutting out one that you're not too precious of. And this is this is this last ten minutes is going to be a mixture of drawing simplistically and cutting. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is again thinking about how these how these drawings can kind of become recurring characters that you could use again in your work. And I mean, it's quite fun because that you could almost think of them as sort of like a cast. You know, you've got your own kind of miniature theatre. I um I had cardboard. Um, Puppet shows when I was a kid. Oh, really? Yeah, they're all little sort of Commedia dell'arte figures. Oh, yeah, those things are great. Okay, so how do I think this should go? So this arm was folded down on the ground. There's a fold in the stomach. There's another fold in the stomach. And again, if you don't if you don't want to cut into ones you've got or you've done it yeah, in a sketchbook, yeah, I'm going to draw a new one in a minute. If, yeah, if, if you've done it in a sketchbook, if you've drawn on both sides and want to keep it, then you can just draw some new pieces that are again inspired by the ones you were doing previously. So, I've kind of thought about where joints are on the body, but I've also just thought about how to accentuate the things I thought were there. So, for example, Lucia's shoulder was quite high. So if I make that more of a thing of its own, it's kind of hard for you to see, being 3D. Okay, now I'm going to start do my own stylized one afresh. So I'm again going to look at my old drawings. And Katrina actually said she photocopied one of theirs. So oh, again. that's very, very quick off the mark. Yeah, very good <laughs> idea. One of the things I'm enjoying about this old drawing I've done is the way I've done the two feet meeting, you know, and it becomes almost like a person who was asking about to draw feet. They're not really kind of that visible as feet anymore, but you know that you, your mind will do a lot of the work. Your mind will join up the dots. It's the end of a leg, people will make a foot there. Right, yes. I mean, so if you look at some of the Picasso cutouts, some of the legs and limbs are very kind of club-like and, um, you know, they're not realistic at all, but we're very, humans are very, very eager to make figures out of things and faces out of things. And we're very quick to animate everything. So about halfway through here, um, and again, so people are sort of cutting into the existing figures, or they are um, drawing again, stylizing, simplifying, and then cutting shapes from that. So I'm again going to cut this one out.
And if anyone's working from their happy pose, I think that would also make a really lovely... I don't know if everyone's working from the same poses, but that's... make quite a different kind of architecture. Um, I suppose, uh, you know, using your cutouts, you could almost create these sort of puppet show like yeah, totally, totally. characters and displays. Yeah. And you, I mean, you know, if we had more time, another thing you could do is set up all the kind of cutouts you've done and draw from them. Right. Fab. Well, if anybody does feel like doing that this afternoon, please do yeah. share those images with us as well. Paula Rago is a great artist. She only, she makes everything she paints. So she'll make puppets and models and then paint them. So it looks like it's fantasy, but it's actually all kind of puppets and... Yeah. I'm even going to cut here a kind of artificial fold in the stomach because obviously that wasn't there in real life, but I think it might kind of communicate Put some pink paper underneath and maybe see a bit more easily. Communicate the um what you got from the body. couple of minutes left. You can also fold to make the body go into different positions. You know, it's here with one knee up, quite fun. <laughs> oh yeah, great. And if you've got sellotape, you can use that to fix uh, the paper into places where it wouldn't naturally sit as well, if you want to. We're about 30 seconds left of this exercise now, but of course, this is absolutely something you can continue working on, continue cutting into, continue folding, play around with, draw from your folded ones. Yeah. Um, and I think that is time. Brilliant, thank you, Eleanor. I think we probably have time just to have a quick look back and say goodbye to our wonderful model, Lucia. Um, and we can have another look at that pose. Ah, so that's great. So there's the real life pose. So think about what you've managed to capture of it. What do you think was true? So you can see in mine. What do you think was true from it? What do you think wasn't? What do you think you've carried over? What do you think you've invented? And yeah. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, 
We're now going to have a look at some of your works. So, uh, Eleanor, you should have the clicker somewhere over there. Yeah. Once we get those up on screen. Oh, great. Oh, these are really lovely, and you've gone for a real kind of like a technical thing where you work with kind of ovals and that idea of the kind of going all around the figure. You've done really nicely in those early ones. And I think the latter ones are great, and you've really captured some of kind of Lucia's posture, I think, really persuasively. Really nice. Oh, great. These are proper dancers from Helena, or Helen. Uh, yeah, I really like that kind of chain, and you've almost made a kind of whole procession of dancers, which is really nice, and thinking about that kind of cast idea. It's kind of nice to create a crowd from your drawing sometimes. Oh, beautiful. It's almost a mermaid there from Elizabeth. That's really great because it's kind of very transformative. And I love that. I love how the, the two hands are quite like they're really weighing the body down and they become sort of stands and also feet. And it's, it's nice because it communicates that sense of weight that is lent on the hands. Yeah, gorgeous. Really, that's a really nice. Someone's really gone in for the face there, which I think is challenging and good. And that knee, that upper knee, is really kind of, really gives me the sense of the bone and the flesh in a really nice way. Oh, great! Again, we've got kind of dancers marching across, really beautifully. It almost looks a bit like dance notation. I don't know if you've ever mm. seen, but. And then those charcoal drawings. Charcoal is actually such a great material for this. I think it's really, um, yeah, really elegant and effectively used there. Oh, beautiful. I really enjoy the kind of slight foreshortening that's happening there. That's very fluid, really nice. Very good, like, description of the hair as well. Sometimes just something like that can give you all the information you need to know. Yeah. Okay, so this is someone who's done very, They look at their, their various drawings of three minutes, really impressive, because they're all so complete. I think that's really, um, yeah, really skilled. And the, the face is, yeah, very kind of very fluid, skilled drawing there. The faces remind me of the, the ones you showed at the beginning with those two faces, the two yeah. laughing faces. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's really nice because, it's almost like a kind of close-up and a wide-angle shot, you know, it's something you get a real feel for the person in that way. I think that's all of them. Oh, fantastic. Very nice. Great. Um, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody for sending their work in, and please do continue to send them over. Um, we love to see them throughout the week. Uh, and if you've been inspired, do get involved with our Daily Doodle Challenge on Twitter. If you would like to donate to the Royal Academy, you can do that at the below link, and I believe that that link is also going to be on the final page. Uh, if you're joining us next week, we're going to be looking at some experimental portraiture, and we're also going to have a look at some of the tonal shading that I mentioned earlier. But thank you all for coming, and thank you especially to Ellen for a fantastic session, Lucia for doing some wonderful modelling, some really lovely yeah. people saying lots of thank you letters in the chat. Um, but hopefully see you all again soon. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye.